All right, guys, I've been getting a lot of questions about how we are doing our post processing with our slightly flexible graphene material that we have. Um, finally, just got approved in the US, so we're really excited about that. But post processing, because it is completely different than what we're used to. So, first thing you're going to do is you are going to remove your print from the gold plate and then you are going to remove the supports. You want to use the smallest supports possible because you don't want to be like ripping at your already fragile, not completely cured flexible denture. Tiny supports, remove all the supports, be really careful around those clasps, and then it actually wants you to ultrasonic. So you don't put it in your pro wash, don't wash it for 10 minutes. Ultrasonic bath for 30 seconds, it says. I have had some residual left over, and if you have a film of it on there, and then it got like mixed in with the alcohol, and then it gets cured, it's really not good. So after my 30 second ultrasonic, I go in there and I just scrub it under the alcohol with a denture brush just to make sure that it's all out of there. So taking it off the supports, we have washed it in IPA alcohol, 30 seconds under the ultrasonic, and scrubbed it. So that's all the curing conditions. You cannot cure it in a Procure 2 because the Procure 2 only gets to 385 nanometer wavelength, whereas the Procure 1 actually gets to 405 nanometer wavelength, which is what the um, wavelength that the machine, the graphene machine, gets to, the one that they recommend. So I went around um, looking at all those specs. So I really discovered that the Procure 1 is the best for it. I wouldn't use the Procure 2 because it's not going to cure it correctly. And then that is not a validated workflow and it could be dangerous for our patients. So, in your curing machine, you want to put on a custom cycle, five minutes. It doesn't need to have any heat, five minutes on a custom cycle. Then after that, gluing the teeth on. So we have washed, we have removed from the build plate, taken the supports off, IPA for 30 seconds in the ultrasonic, and then we have cured for five minutes in the curing machine. We're going to take just an acrylic burr and get the supports off of there, and then we're going to bond the teeth in. All you gotta do to bond the teeth in is take some of the liquid base resin, the graphene resin, put a little bit in the socket, push that tooth in there, and you can either use any excess resin, because there's always some that comes out whenever you place the teeth in the socket, because you wanna make sure there's no air bubbles in there. You can either then choose to candy coat it with a brush, or you can remove the excess, light cure it, and then you are going to, um, put it back inside your cure machine after you have put those together uh, if you do the candy coat for 10 full minutes because remember that's fresh resin around the outside so it needs to fully cure okay 10 more minutes so we did our five minutes originally and then 10 minutes this time after we have put the teeth in there and that's basically it then you just polish it it's super easy. You can candy coat it or you can do a polishing. My candy coats, I feel like I can always end up seeing like a little bit of brush strokes or I always get a little bubble somewhere. I don't know why. So I tend to just polish mine and it's like a challenge, like how shiny can I get it? But uh, in the graphy manual that I got emailed to me from Korea, um, they recommended either one. They didn't care. But um, they did recommend that when you are putting everything together that you print out your model whenever you're putting your teeth onto your base, print out your model. Um, I don't just because I don't always work with a model, but you know, whatever their instructions say. But super important to know that you have to get to that 405 nanometer wavelength and that's the five minute initial cure. And then once you do your candy coat, if you choose to do that, and then once you cement your teeth, it's another 10 minute cure. So five minutes, 10 minutes. Um, it doesn't tell me exactly what uh, temperature to set it at, so I set it at zero degrees. I just don't ever want to make it too hot or warp or anything like that, but that's pretty hard to do with those 3D printed resins. They keep their shape really well, even with heat. So watch the video, like it, share it. Um, feel free to uh, tell other people about it because I know this is a very new area to all of us, doing these uh, nice 3D printed flexible partials, whether they are for the short term or for the long term, but this is for a patient of mine um, that I'm delivering tomorrow. And once you, it doesn't have like a lot of give to it right now. And once you get hot, it'll have more for sure. It's very similar to Night Guard Flex. We currently use either Denka teeth with it or the Sprint Ray High Impact teeth. Either one works good. Uh, and that's how I do my post-processing on all of my graphy. Give them a good polish. Uh, patients really love them. Make sure they're not heavy tea drinkers though because I had this patient and I thought he was a smoker because his graphy um, partials kept on the roof of his mouth on his palate kept getting really really dark and I'd have to polish it off and then I would you know put a candy coat on it and it'd be fine but I couldn't understand why it was getting super dark and I told him I'm like are you smoking in this and he said no I drink 
sweet tea all day long at work because he's a bartender. So it wasn't actually the smoking that turned it brown, it was actually the tea. So being really careful, I'm really cautious with my, pa with my patients on 3D printed things and things that are acidic like tea, coffee, soda, because I've seen firsthand that it can definitely stain and wear away at that glaze. So let me know if you have any questions.